Eh, buongiorno, benvenuti eh, al primo giorno del primo laboratorio dal basso in Puglia, Go to Europe. Um, è per noi un onore avere come primo trainer di questa esperienza Bruno Sales da Silva perché siamo sicuri che il suo bagaglio di conoscenze di Project Cycle Management sia assolutamente di altissimo livello e che i suoi metodi e strumenti di disseminazione del suo bagaglio siano efficaci per noi. Solo qualche informazione di servizio prima di passare la parola a Domenico Centrone che è il referente dell'Arti per il nostro laboratorio. Noi ringraziamo Zip per averci ospitato per tutta la durata del laboratorio nella loro sede, dato che è una struttura molto grande con moltissimi servizi e utenti vulnerabili è d'obbligo l'invito a cercare di facilitare il lavoro degli altri durante la nostra esperienza e chiaramente rispettare la struttura che come vedete è nuovissima perché è appena ristrutturata grazie alla Regione Puglia e le attività in corso negli altri ambienti. Per quanto riguarda la gestione delle presenze, vi prego di ricordare ogni giorno di segnare la vostra presenza al registro firme, che cambia ogni giorno, perché ci serve per poi verificare la vostra presenza per gli attestati di partecipazione e comunque per il nostro report all'Agenzia regionale. L'altra cosa che vi volevo dire, penso di averla anticipata in email, è che dato che c'è una pausa pranzo e poi si riparte alle due e mezza, se qualcuno vuole usufruire del servizio mensa che ha attivato la cooperativa sociale ZIP, passerà un foglio di prenotazione scelta pasto con relativo costo, chiaramente molto sociale, visto che siamo in una struttura sociale, in modo da organizzare il lavoro almeno per due giorni, quindi oggi vi viene chiesto, per oggi e domani e così via. L'ultima cosa, chi ha già idea di partecipare al Project Work potrebbe cominciare a portarci documenti di identità, perché noi dobbiamo preparare un documento che è un patto formativo tra noi e i partecipanti al Project Work, come documentazione poi del lavoro che svolgeremo insieme alla fine del percorso. Uh, per qualsiasi cosa di cui aveste bisogno in questi giorni, i referenti oltre me uh, siamo, so, sono li, lo staff di Sinergia che vi faccio vedere, così visivamente sapete a chi rivolgervi, Cinzia, Cinzia e Patrizia. E, um, io avrei finito, grazie ancora. Um, because my English is very bad, I, I don't know that, but please, no, it's not. please talk slowly. Okay. <laughs> Ok, um, Domenico, tu tu sei zanto. Eh, grazie a tutti, eh, buongiorno e benvenuti, questo per noi è il primo laboratorio dal basso, come giustamente diceva Pia, io sono Domenico Centrone dello staff Arti che cura questa nuova iniziativa sperimentale della regione Puglia Arti e Bollenti Spiriti che si chiama per l'appunto Laboratori dal Basso. Vorrei spendere giusto due parole sui laboratori dal basso che alla fine è l'opportunità, ehm, diciamo l'iniziativa che vi sta dando questa opportunità oggi di essere qui. E laboratori dal basso eh, diciamo, è un'azione un di sostegno alle giovani realtà pugliesi, quindi par parliamo di associazioni o microimprese come aiutare queste giovani realtà che operano sul territorio pugliese la Regione Puglia ha pensato di farlo non, non dando loro un finanziamento economico ma dando loro la possibilità di accedere a dei veri e propri percorsi di apprendimento e, eh, customizzati, sulla, customizzati sulla base dei bisogni di apprendimento della giovane realtà stessa. stessa. Diciamo che le parole, le parole chiave per i laboratori dal basso sono cooperazione e apprendimento. Cooperazione perché l'idea è che per l'appunto più soggetti identifichino i propri bisogni di apprendimento, i bisogni di apprendimento comune e insieme, quindi questa è la parte di cooperazione, insieme decidano e identifichino un vero e proprio percorso di apprendimento sul, per soddisfare per l'appunto tali bisogni. Quindi l'idea dei laboratori dal basso è, eh, da, è quella di dare l'opportunità 
a questo gruppo di acquisto di conoscenza di decidere cosa imparare, da chi imparare e come impararlo. In questo caso i tre proponenti di questo laboratorio dal basso hanno identificato congiuntamente i propri bisogni di apprendimento che sono quelli per l'appunto dell'europrogettazione e voi tutti che siete qui rappresentate per l'appunto la comunità che è interessata a questi argomenti e quindi diciamo eh, questo per noi è un grande onore oggi è il primo laboratorio dal basso e diciamo, il nostro invito è qualora anche voi facciate parte di un'associazione o di una microimpresa a sicuramente far visita al nostro sito internet laboratoriodalbasso.it e comunque di contattarci qualora siete interessati a eh, diciamo, eh, realizzare un vostro percorso di apprendimento. Diciamo che laboratorio dal basso, questa è l'ultima cosa a poi concludo, si declina in tre azioni, per l'appunto uno sono la prima è il laboratorio che è questa, poi c'è la seconda iniziativa che è testimonianze, un'azione di sensibilizzazione per portare qui in Puglia relatori, testimoni eccellenti che abbiano fatto qualcosa di rilevante nel campo dell'innovazione e dell'imprenditoria e la terza è mentoring che sarà attiva a breve in cui praticamente l'obiettivo è quello di far affiancare a una giovane idea in uno stato primordiale una persona invece senior che abbia già acquisito esperienza nello stesso settore della giovane idea. Quindi queste sono le nostre tre iniziative, c'è anche qui con me eh, la, la collega Flavia Giordano, anche lei diciamo, dello staff, quindi qualora abbiate voi bisogno di informazioni noi siamo qui per, diciamo, per rispondervi. Io vi ringrazio, vi auguro un buon laboratorio e ringrazio anche il docente eh, Sales da Silva per essere qui con noi e niente, buona lezione a tutti. Passo la parola al docente, prego. Ah, ok, perfetto. Allora, buongiorno, benvenuti, e that's all for my Italian today, <laughs> ok? But I'm supposed to learn some words at the end of the, the, the event, right? At the end of the week. Um, I would like to take the opportunity to thank RT for this event. Uh, it was really well organized and fast. Also, um, thanks to Synergia, the reason why I'm here, and uh, Asa also with Archangelo. And a special thanks for, for Juliana that I met uh, only in June. So, We, we are going to start a bit easy, you know, because it's going to be a lot of information for uh, five days. We have a major, it's, it's, I don't know if you'd like cycling, but you know the Tour de France? Sometimes you have really uh, hard uh, uh, days. And um, Thursday, we're going to address the budget. The budget is number. I don't know if you guys like numbers. I don't like numbers, but we have to do it. It's a bit tricky. Okay, so I'm sorry, uh, the beginning my, <coughs> my laptop is so old, it's a dinosaur, so we had to change. Okay, um, this first hour we are going to have a, a wide look at what is The, um, <clears throat> the aims and the organization, what we expect to achieve for five days, all right? Basically, as you probably already know, we are talking about... Europe. And more specifically, the life long learning program, which is LLP. Uh, by the way, congratulations for the Nobel Prize, the Peace Nobel Prize. Okay. This is um, <clears throat> something I would like to share with you. Dove lo spirito non funziona con la mano, non c'è arte. 
you know who said that? Basically, if you really don't do knowledge, it's something someone would have, but uh, okay, I'll give you a tip, just a, a little hint. Hmm? Any close? Leonardo da Vinci, okay? A great man, <clears throat> he was a polymath, and uh, I decided to start with this image because he always had an holistic approach. Holistic, you know what, it's a wide approach of things, okay? And this is quite important when you want to plan projects, and even more important if you're working on the European program or World Bank programs, because you have to be as inclusive as possible. Okay, it's just not the project, but you have to go beyond the project. Okay? So, by the way, <clears throat> um, I just wanted to mention, uh, Leonardo da Vinci uh, was born in April, and uh, he died in uh, May. And I was looking at the dates of the people I'm going to talk about, and it's crazy, the coincidences, and the age they, they were deceased. So, it's, it's, it's something interesting to talk about. Okay. So we had the idea of the holistic approach, wide approach. Now, this, this sentence is about more the fact that even if you're really motivated, if you have a very nice uh, idea and dream, without plan, without organization, well, it's going to be a bit difficult to get to the point. All right? E either you you have um, really um, a good team and you're not so skilled, but without the plan and the organization and the strategy, it's very difficult to achieve the objective. You might achieve 20% of the objective, but we will not reach the main goal of the, of the, um, of the project. So, you, you, need to, to, you need to see, to, you need really to see what you're going to do, practically. You need to believe in what you're going to do. This is very important. You have to, to have it really in, in, inside you. And obviously, you have to do everything that you have going to do in the project, whatever the framework, European or not. You have to have a very clear idea, notion of the objective, what you were there to do, what is the final result, OK? Because otherwise, you'll be lost. Or someone will always knock at your door, hey, what are you doing? It's not there, it's here, okay? So I came to this image, bees. It's not coincidence, it's, 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 it's a purpose because I'm working on a project on the bees and I, I, I learned so many things from the bees. Hard work, organi organization, I don't know if you have an idea of the, the organization of these little insects. And result, you know, this honeycombs, this is something really impressive, this honeycomb, this organization. I use this image a lot to um, try to make an image for everybody to understand what is a plan. So, and it's a fantastic result, honey. I don't know if you like honey, but I'm a fan. So, um, <clears throat> a bit about me in a quick, quick way. We are going to break the ice a bit later because I'm going to ask you who you are a bit, very quickly. So I was born in Brazil, spent a lot of time in France. I, my degree is uh, in chemistry. I work essentially in industry and uh, small companies, 10 to 15 people, small scales. I began in a big company called Elf Aquitaine at the time. Today it's Elf. And I was lost, so many people. It was like New York, you know, it's, oof, it's not for me. So I prefer small scales. Um, <clears throat> well, I started working uh, specifically in the vocational education and training. I don't know if everybody is uh, at ease with the VET. Vocational education training is basically education, but in different ways. You have the formal way, that is uh, schools, universities, training centers, but fo um, focused on, on uh, education. Um, and. Uh, Non-formal ways to, to learn. I don't know if you're familiar with this term, non-formal. Okay, this is a, actually this is an informal place, okay, of uh, um, learning. 
So these formal, non-formal, informal are buzzwords, are important keywords also you will hear often during this, uh, this event. So I started really in this field five years ago, more or less, because of the uh, human resource management. I like to manage resources, human resources. It's really challenging, you know, it's the relation between people, it's something really rich, you learn a lot about it. Well, the, the, the program really on Europe only three years ago, because I understood that what I was able to, to do on, on the normal routine, no framework organization was very useful uh, for my partners and colleagues in the, in the framework of EU programs. Intercultural learning, I don't know if you're familiar with this, this kind of um, learning, intercultural. This is my passion, this is my core activity, because I think intercultural is transversal to everything, okay? Wherever you go, even in your own town, you have an immigrant. I mean, intercultural is something that bound all people together. Hobbies, philosophy, religion, gardening. I'm going to use a lot of things like that to give you a practical image, because sometimes you read a, an information, blah, 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 blah. What does it mean, really? So I try to have images so you can understand. And obviously my passion is learning, that's why I'm so uh, passionate for all these polymaths, you know, Leonardo da Vinci, all these guys, they've been learning all their life. There was this guy in 1990, 1990 years old, a Greek, he decided to learn a uh, language. You know, this is really interesting. Okay, now, you understand that I'm going really quite quickly to the focus of, uh, of uh, our activity because it's going to be a, a lot of information. I, I think you, you, you need to have a, a quick image about what we're talking about. So, when, when we're talking about the EU background of um, project cycle management, it means, well, you have the project cycle management overall, you know, the key methods, the concepts, all that stuff, and we are going to understand What's the link between this world and then Europe? What, what the commission, what the evaluators, what all the people looking at the project are using to analyze your project, okay? And, and actually, this is very important to understand the evaluator point of view, which is the European policy and the strategy. Everything you do under a European program, whatever you do, is linked to Europe and what Europe is and what Europe want to be. It, uh, it's a bit polemic because uh, maybe you, you, you think something about Europe, I think different. But they try to have a common ground, okay? That's what we call a framework. Uh, I just wanted to mention that anytime you feel a bit lost, do not hesitate to stop and to ask. Okay, this is a free space. I'm not some kind of a guru. Well, we just colleagues, peers. If you have a doubt, then there's no doubt. Ask. Okay? Or if I go too fast or something. About, about something you would like speci especially to address and to talk about in order not to, um, let's say, not to lose the progress of the, the event, just take a note and get back to that later, because we will have Q&A moments, question and answers. Okay, the background, common language. What does it mean? You speak Italian, I speak Portuguese. This is not a common language, but there is. Well, first, there is the, our European English, <laughs> because, uh, you know, when you go to England and, and they talk, you talk to them, they say, what, which kind of English is that? It's European English. Well, the common language means we have to understand all together, we have to, to communicate, we have to progress together, all together at the same pace, and obviously we have to find a way to understand each other. So we have common, common understanding of specific words. We're going to use some glossaries in, um, later in the sessions. So when we talk about anything, okay, social change, for example, okay, immigrants, Okay? Immigrants for, uh, maybe for Turkey are uh, guys from, um, I don't know, from Kurdistan. Immigrants for me are guys from Africa countries. You see? But there are immigrants. 
So the common language is an immigrant is someone coming from some place, going to another, and trying to in integrate to the country. That's the first, uh, first. If you, if you want to have cohesion in a country or in a place, you have to have a common language, which doesn't mean it's a language in itself. Common procedures, laws, trade policies, currency, ouch, ouch, euro, common procedures, okay? This is very important. So first point, common language, common procedures, there's a, the, some key uh, situation on the common uh, European uh, background. And uh, <clears throat> after that, common objectives. Okay, where we are going? Are we going to go, go bigger? Seems to. Are we going to work this way, that way? Are we going to support politically, in different contexts, other countries? So, what is it going to be? And don't forget, uh, at all, all time, whenever you talk about Europe, you, you have to, to integrate NATO, you have to integrate all the bodies that uh, made uh, Europe. Okay? We, we, later on, we will have an idea also about what, uh, what, what is the um, structure of the European Union, okay? the seven um, institutions. There are some political institutions, there are some operational institutions. It's important to know that also. So obviously, when you're looking at the uh, background, you're also looking at um, some difficult situations, such as economics. Well, I don't need to comment anything. You watch TV every day and you know what's going on. Personally, I don't think there is a crisis. They're just lost. People are lost. But well, that's my opinion. Politics, now since I don't know if you have an idea about the construction of Europe, okay, how it started. It started way back before the war. And then slowly, actually it started in Italy with Rome. And then it started constructing itself um, better and better. But it's all Europe started with trade. Just a, a thing. Do you have this, this, this laser thing? No? The laser thing to point out. You don't, do you have this here? Sorry to interrupt. No? It's all right. Sorry. Sorry. So um, Europe started with the. Um, with the coal and steel trade organization. It was a trade thing, okay? Only after that, it started to be more social and political. And obviously, last but not least, us. Are you part of Europe? Do you feel part of Europe? What is it being part of Europe? I don't have a European passport, I have a Brazilian passport. I live in Portugal and in France for a long time, but I feel European. Whatever the country I go, I feel we are the same. Actually, I think the world is, but in this framework, I think we have a very important. This is really some kind of a red line in everything you're going to do. Obviously, when you focus on budget, you focus on work package, you feel focus on that and that, you narrow. But this is a common umbrella, okay? Social sense of belonging. You have specific program even just for that. It's called uh, Europe for Citizens. Okay, so just to have an, an idea of the importance of um, of this uh, of this. I uh, interrupt again because I need a watch. I don't have a watch just to know where I am. Okay, don't worry. I look at yours. Okay. I'm supposed to be finishing the first uh, module now, but it's going to be a bit uh, more difficult. I'm not going too fast, right? <coughs> okay. So let's have a look at the aim of the uh, the aim of the um, event. Uh, the aim in in our event means. The, the, the main core result objective that we want to, to reach, okay? So 
by Friday afternoon, you would be able to say to someone with a structure, with the right organization, what is Grunvig multilateral program? Okay, that's the main thing. You will have to. Who's this guy? This is Grunvig. You notice he's old too. This guy died old, huh? Just for you to have an understanding of who he was. I don't know really. I tried to, to, to understand for some time why they decided uh, to call this program Grunvig. But he was a very important pastor. And um, let's say that uh, Danish, he was a polymath also. Philosopher, historian, political, politician, teacher. Okay? All these guys, all the programs you're going to work are named after great thinker, great teachers, great uh, influential persons on education level. Oh, yeah, and <laughs> this one is even better. September the 8th, September the 2nd, just the, the same month. Da Vinci was the same season, now it's the same month. Interesting. Okay. The second, the second, uh, um, <clears throat> the first uh, um, situation to understand the, the, the program is this program background. And by background, we, um, I would like to mention the, the policy and the, um, and the work plans that the European Commission, and more particularly the Directorate General of Education and Culture, have been writing. Okay? The European Commission with the uh, Parliament is a, 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 a bureaucratic system and to, uh, to make everybody understand what it is all about, they write, uh, let's say it's, 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 uh, it's, it's called notices, it's called declarations, it's papers that, is, that are part of the official journal. Okay? So it's a policy. And it's, it is the law. It is the law, but you have to, sorry, you have to understand that not the law in the meaning of, okay, you have to abide to that. If you don't do that, you go to prison. It's not like, it's not that, that it's, it's, um, if you design your program and you don't abide to that, then you have a problem. Then you are out of the objective of the program, okay? So it's a recommendation that you, it's mandatory. And you will learn in this uh, event that there are major documents, major policy you just can't avoid. If you're out of that, you're done. You're out of context. So understanding the Grundvig Multiral project, one thing is the European Dragon. I can mention maybe already, yeah, this one is, is, is very important. It's 2006. <clears throat> it's called a, a decision. I'm sorry because my handwriting have been suffering from computers. Huh? Oh. This 1720, uh, three years after that, I almost almost getting right to know it by heart because this is a. Uh, this is, this is the, 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 the main document that you will use to design your project. In this document, you have all the objectives of the programs, specific objectives of the programs, the frameworks, the priorities, all that stuff. So, I'm, I'm just, um, I'm just uh, going to, to read that because this is um, written in the in the document, a Grunvig program is for the teaching and learning needs of people and organizations in all forms of adult, very important, okay? Adult education, learners and providers and practitioners. So this program address the adults. Adults, what is adults? According to this document, and well, with the knowledge of the programs, you have a good idea that it's everything, depending on the countries, between 16, starting more officially, 
25, until, if I'm not wrong, 50. But it depends also, some countries it's 55. So according to the programs, according to what you are working on, it would definitely start at 25 to 50. And by this, 16, it's because in some program, adults are considered from 16. But the, the, the major thing is they are not studying, okay? They are not students. I mean, they, they can be here graduated, okay? They have a diploma. They're looking for a job or they're working. But you can't be student and be part of this program as a student. For student, you have Erasmus. I will see later. Okay, um, <clears throat> I'm trying to, to keep up the schedule. Okay, um, you have, um, let's say, uh, two other major uh, documents. We will see so many documents, but I would like to refer these ones because time to time I will get back to this flip chart. Um, so, this one. You have what they call the ET 2020. Education and training 2020, 2020 the objectives, okay? This is a major policy work plan. Everything is there, meaning what are the program aiming to do until 2020? And, and this is actually part of another major document that is EU 2020. Maybe you're familiar with that, EU, EU 2020? This is a kind of a, what they call in French, feuille de route, okay? It's a guidance, uh, main highway, okay? You can go into the highway, but that's the main stream, okay? So, remember, remember this, remember this, remember this. These are documents you have to remember. Understanding this program is for education. I would like to um, maybe add something that uh, it could be interesting to mention here also. When we, we're talking about education, you know that there are um, different levels of education according to the international standard, the Bologna process. Also, these frameworks are important to understand the education system when you're dressing, you're working on the project, okay? We will see all these main lines on, in, in later models, okay? More uh, deeper, with a more narrow approach, okay? Um, okay, adults, the policies, the application procedures. Oh my God, this is something. Sometimes it's all written. You think it's there, and, but it's different. And you have to, you have to know a lot of, uh, I, I have to say maybe it was a bit more difficult for me because I decided to, to go on, you know, to, to, to jump into the arena and to fight the bulls. And it took me some time to understand a bit the logics because it's completely different, I think, from the logic of a Adobe Acrobat user and all that stuff. So, talking about the application, in this specific Grunvik program we are talking about, multilateral, it's an online application, and it's a, it's a centralized um, application project. It means that an agency in the European Commission, the uh, Agency for Education, uh, it's, go, it's called Ed, um, education Agency, uh, EACEA, Education Agency for Culture of Adults. In, uh, it's, it's, it's something that um, manage the budget and manage the applications, okay? So it's an official agency. You have the uh, uh, Adobe Acrobat application form, which is basically the, um, the uh, heart of the application. So you download it, fill it, you add attachment, and you apply. We will see that in detail, and actually, I guess we have time for that. We will do it. You remember Leonardo da Vinci? Knowing, doing. You have uh, in this application, uh, the uh, Adobe Acrobat document, you will have 
the project definition, that is a Microsoft Word document, you will have the budget to attach to this application, that is an Excel file, Excel file, sorry. You will have also some legal documents for the applicant, that is the um, declaration of owner. It means that you're telling the truth and you engage legally, legally, this is very important, uh, to the uh, commission. And um, beside the uh, declaration, declaration of owner, you have what they call the legal, legal entity. It means, uh, well, uh, it's all about your company, the organization, you know, the name, VAT number, and all that stuff. So all this is true. You declare on your owner, it's true. You attach all that to the document. You back online. You apply. When you apply, well, I'm, I'm going quick now because we're going deeper later. When you apply, you receive um, on the application form an ident identification number. Save it, very important to save. Print it, and then you will receive an email from the EACA uh, confirming that your application is uh, well, um, well uh, submitted. Doesn't mean uh, anything but submitted, okay? Sometimes you receive the email, oh, it's code. No, it's just an information, uh, we receive a receipt. Okay, so understanding Grundvig program, the background, adult education, the application procedure, we go, we'll, we'll go through that during the event, and the structure, okay? How it's going to work, how you're going to, uh, to, to write it, the concepts, the definitions of the sections, why these sections, the work packages, all the details, okay? And you will see, obviously, it's, it's kind of obvious what I'm saying, but uh, all this is interconnected, okay? Even the construction of the documentation answer to the European background, blah, 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 okay? So, the aim are these four points. You have, um, let's say, you will have an idea, because, well, when you design a, a project, you have major uh, key steps, right? But on, under a European program, some key steps are not maybe sometimes uh, used on, on basic uh, pro, um, project management, okay? So these key steps for Europe, European program are, are very important for you to know in order not to forget them and to work on them, okay? All right. So you have an idea of the big aim. Now we're going uh, to the specific objectives. It's, uh, just for you to know, it's 10, uh, 10, 10, 5. Morning. Let me have a look. Yeah, okay. I'm going to be a bit quicker now because this is basically the structure of the uh, organization. So, but if you uh, have some question, you can stop in. All right. During this process, we will uh, have a clear idea about the why. Why are we doing this project? Okay. What's the rationale? Okay. Where are we going? This is basic one, two, three, A, B, C project plan. Okay. That's why I'm going a bit quicker. The what? What are you going to do? What kind of project? What kind of service? What kind of solution you will bring to answer to a need? The how, the methodology, the who, target group. Target group is some keywords also, okay? Who you are addressing to. And, and, and define it, be clear about it, okay? Example, um, early school leavers, long time unemployed people, immigrants, okay? Women, men, young, adults. In this, case, in this case, well, it's because 25 for me, it's considered young, but they're adults. The when, the calendar, the timetable, okay? All this is specific and interconnected. So you will have with all this the rational to the work plan, okay? So this is basically, well, the result, okay? It connects, it fits. Back to the bees. All right? 
Okay, the methodology. Uh, well, we will learn. This uh, I've been uh, mentioning before. We will do. And we will share and debate. So either you will feel comfortable to do it in smaller group or all together. But at some, um, at some point I have to challenge you a bit. So I have to let you in, uh, in uh, boiling a bit, you know. So we will decide how, with the organization also, we will decide how we could uh, work together. Okay, the timetable, just uh, to have a quick look. Mm. Oh, forget it. <laughs> Too small. I was. Um... Do you have the timetable with you? No. Okay. Well, very quickly, just to have an idea. Today, we're going from Europe. Okay. Europe, and we'll end with uh, GMP. You're familiar with this term already. Greenwich Multilateral Project. Tomorrow in the morning, two hours only on basic things about project planning because, you know, there's so many ways you can start planning your project. So many methods, so many keywords, so many things. I will propose some ideas and something I'm working on from some time that is the log logical uh, framework approach, which is something that Europe likes very much. It's a trend. So, better be friend with that, okay? If you propose a project with the logical framework approach, your evaluator will thank you. So it's better to, instead of discovering. Um, on Wednesday, we are going through the um, MS Word application, the structure and the writing of the project itself, okay? Because you will have the section and what does it mean? If you read something, you understand something, but, well, I'll give you some, uh, let's say some indication, a bit more practical, okay, to understand. Thursday, big day, money, budget, good luck. Um, but it's very interesting because, you know, I work with an accountant on my project and I work with a lawyer because these guys, they know. But believe me, you need to understand how to work with number. If you don't understand, you can, okay, you deal with it. No, you must understand. Because then you will know where are the limits and how to organize yourself according to the budget. And, and, and after each, because the morning are a bit heavy, we will have some activities, okay? And we try, I'll try, I propose to the organization to use some non-formal method of, of working together and even doing simple things together, like for example, the Q&A, okay? So you will also learn during this event some kinds of non-formal methods you can use eventually within your project. Okay, back to... Okay, so uh, sessions, within the sessions, modules. After that, activities, and at the end of the day, a review. Okay, what did we learn today? So we have short Q&A after each module, so okay, to keep it working. And at the end of the day, we review everything and just for uh, our uh, um, um, integration of the information, okay? That's your turn. So, really quickly, and if you agree, if you agree, I'd like to know uh, a bit, since we are many of us, I propose for you to tell me your first name, what you're doing, what's your field of, um, you know, uh, that's about it. For me to have an idea also about the audience, all right? I know you already, you. Okay. 
Sinergia. All right. You? Sinergia. Okay. You? Organization. It's an organization. Uh, uh, education training. Education training. Okay. Okay, student. You? Oh, thanks. Good idea. Grazie. I'm Luisa. I got graduated in modern languages this July, and now I'm searching for a job or something to, uh, yes, a training in Europe or something like that. Oh, interesting. Okay, you? I'm Cristina, uh, and I'm a social media marketing manager or consultant. So interesting. Yeah. Okay. Marketing interested. is important for this project. Yeah, believe me. That's why. I'm Cosimo, and uh, I am a student of uh, engineer. Engineering. Yes. Which field? Uh, of gestion. Uh, Ergonomics. Yes. Also. Okay. You? I'm Katarina. I'm from Austria. And I'm right now a Grundweg assistant with uh, Synergia. Oh. And back in Vienna, I'm a social counselor and German teacher for migrant women. Okay, all right. Very interesting. You? Hi. I'm Pia, um, a teacher on pension. In pension. Oh, yeah, yeah. Your reform? All right. Okay. Um, but I care uh, the project, the uh, European project. Uh, for young people, um, youth in action, uh, but uh, for um, adults, Grundwing. Uh, in my country, uh, Ruvo di Puglia. Okay, okay? I'm the same. Okay, thank you. Hi, uh, my name is uh, Martina Frisone. I'm a degree in psychology. You? Sorry? I'm a psychologist. Oh, interesting. You know, a lot of trainers are psychologists. You? Um, I am Giusy. Um, I work to um, orientamento, specialist of orientamento, and uh, I am uh, associated to uh, cooperative uh, um, to um, um, servizio alle imprese, uh, formazione. Um, okay. And or orientation meaning career guidance. Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. Yes. You. I am uh, Gennaro and I am a student uh, informatica computer uh, programming. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thanks. I'm Marco. Uh, I'm degree in economics and uh, now I'm searching for a job. Okay. Commerce uh, economist or sales? Uh, commerce. Com sales. Sell sales? Yeah. So, okay. Hi, I'm Enrico, I'm a philosophy researcher, and uh, I'm looking for a job and for a perspective. Philosopher. Interesting. You know, there are a lot of philosophers in this room today. They are not here, but you? Hi, I'm Michela, and uh, I'm a freelance photographer, but I work um, uh, to care some project in the field of uh, anthropology and uh, uh, photographic and video um, documentation. Media. Media. Okay. You? I am Elisa and uh, I, I am a student of, politic, um, of science politics in the university. So political studies? Yes. Okay. In Europe. European studies in politics. Okay. I'm Antonella and uh, I'm a waitress in uh, restaurants for the moment. All right. I am Veronica, and I am an uh, artist, uh, street art. Oh, interesting. Okay. I'm Carlo, and I uh, study economics in Berlin. I am Pasquale, I'm a student of building engineering, I and mean, I'm worker in uh, Surveyor. Sir? Surveyor. Okay. I am Angela, and work uh, in a public school. 
and uh, I have my staff of uh, uh, Pew Valoria on Luz. Um, with the, the age of the students? Public school? Which Public school, uh, uh, the medium. Okay, the, the small. Okay. Mm, no. yeah, the first, the first uh, <laughs> from four to from four to, to eight to ten. Uh, secondary school. Ah, second. Okay. Uh, I'm Bernarda. I'm working uh, for uh, a company, Lixes, uh, that uh, work about tourist uh, promotion, touristic promotion. Touristic tourism. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Hi, I'm Fabio. I work in Foggia in a um, Sistema Sviluppo organization. Um, that uh, work for uh, the development on the other organization. Okay, Sviluppo is development, right? Okay. I have an objective in this uh, event also. By the end of the week, I have to, to learn 50 words in Italian. Yeah? Hello, I'm Flavia, I'm uh, from Arti, and uh, I work for Laboratori del Basso, I'm in the staff, and um, I'm, I work uh, in the field uh, in, um, of uh, EU, uh, EU funds, especially ERDF. My name is Domenico and now I work in uh, Case Bottega. Case Bottega is uh, an association uh, that supports uh, uh, handcraft uh, production. Fantastic. I am Francesca. I am a content uh, producer and I work uh, in the fields of uh, culture and art. Okay, thank you. Last but not least. Um, I'm Andrea, I'm a marketing consultant. consultant. Okay, marketing. Uh, you presented yourself. You already I know guess. my answer. Okay. <laughs> okay. Do you want me to? All right. Well, thank you very much, everybody. Grazie. Uh, what do I have here? Uh, just all around, do you have uh, some specific experience in PCM, project cycle management? Someone? One year? Two years? Ten years? Veteran? No? Okay. But you plan every day, did you know that? You do. Um, any question at this point? Something troubles you? Do you? I'm looking for the micro. Is yeah, no. a question or comment? Uh, no, I have participated uh, to um, LLP program, like teacher. Um, which which uh, action was it? Uh, Do you remember? Being. Grundvig, si. learning partnership, assistantship, assist uh, no, no, a learning program, project. Learning partnership, a group of partners working together. Yes. Okay. For a workshop. Oh, Grundvig workshop. Yes. Okay. I um, uh, had an idea to develop, uh, uh, and uh, I proposed um, that uh, idea to an uh, organization. And uh, I uh, write with them, wrote with them the, the program of the, work, the workshop, and uh, it was okay. It was a project. It was approved, uh, and uh, you yes. went on. We have uh, um, done it uh, last uh, month. Last month? Last month? Yes. Okay. So you applied last year? Yes. I, um, or you applied this year? No, we have uh, done the workshop. Okay. And yes, we apply last year. Last year, all right. Yeah. So you design, and you were a trainee or a trainer in this workshop, or a facilitator? I, uh, um, I've uh, um, proposed the idea uh, to this organization. They uh, wrote the, the project, project and I, I, I was the teacher. Oh, you were a facilitator. Yes. Okay, a lot of uh, <laughs> interesting words here. Facilitator, teacher, trainer, designer. All these components are important to understand the, when you are going to work on a project because you know who do what, etc. All right? A Grundvig workshop is an amazing 
um, action of this program. Amazing. I had one, uh, actually I fell in love with uh, global education in uh, October last year but because of a Grundvig workshop. So this is the reason why I'm focusing more and more on in intercultural learning. So, nothing special right now. Okay, now we are going to, to <clears throat> start a bit more uh, in deep the uh, learn, lifelong learning program with these second sessions. Thank you very much for sharing uh, this information from, with me. I'm, I'm going to upload here. Uh, hope it's going to work. Uh, Microsoft, oh yeah, it's here. I will need just, and uh, it gives you an uh, interesting uh, idea of uh, this uh, holistic approach I told you. I should have done that a bit before, I'm sorry, but... Uh, where is the... Uh, where is the app here? Blah, blah, blah. Let's see if it works like this. Very smart, this Google. Okay, this is my face. Okay, this video is a part of a project that I manage. I didn't design this one, but I was a um, coordinator and manager. And at the final conference, I proposed to, to, to the participant to watch it. But now I'm a bit afraid without any of the speakers. How is it? Is it linked? Is it linked? Where? Do you think it's going to? I don't know. We can try. I don't think so. It's not working. Okay, it's challenging. Thank you. So I'll be the uh, voice off because I know this movie. Um, when in time, if we, if it's possible, well, uh, I'll, I'll find a way to for you to watch it or you watch it tonight. Okay, this is the partnership for the 21st century skills. It's about what are the new skills we need for the jobs coming up? So above and beyond. A story about the school, uh, and they, they plan to, to organize um, contests, uh, building some, some, some car, you know, a toy car, in order to, so the, the idea is who is going to design to work with the best car, and who is going to race, and win, who's going to be, it's a contest. So they receive a kit, you know, and um, <clears throat> that's this guy looking at the map, looking at the guidance, the guidelines, working hard, very motivated, and his friend, no gender issue here, okay? It's a woman, but nothing to do. She's, uh, you know, looking to the nature, getting inspired, 
listening to the bird, a very uh, nice song of the bird there, you can listen right now. Okay, he's been working hard, the car is ready, fantastic, he's a very good learner, very efficient, the car is ready already. Oh my god, what, <laughs> what's this, a plane? Something strange, she was inspired by nature, by the bird too much maybe, I don't know. So she want to fly, there's the idea. Okay, so she, she, she look at the plan differently, obviously. Well, actually she didn't even look at the plan. And then, well, they discuss about, well, oh, I did this, you're wrong, this, you're not right. Uh, I think mine is more interesting, it's more innovative. Something, oh, we should work together, maybe. Maybe working together would fit something. So here they are, working together. Oh, no, I have this idea. Oh, maybe better this one. Oh, no, I want to change. Uh, let, let make it work hard at night, because no time. And uh, by the um, end of this interesting cooperation, the concert day, all the cars are the same. Ah, this one is exactly the same as the first one, the, this guy, oh, this one too. All the cars are the same. Some, I have some trouble. But here they are, and there are two of them in the car. Not one, but two of them in the car. So, some kind of, uh, you know, I'm the best race starts. All on board, ready to go. No hurry, it's okay, we have time. He's always a bit worried, the man, huh? Okay. Hey, it's not fair, you're flying. <laughs> Winner. Okay. Well, they comment about this. It works, we won. But uh, it's not only winning, it's not arriving, it's all together, flying in group. So what they learn, the other get too. They didn't get it for themselves. I'll let you think about this one. So, uh, <clears throat> I hope you enjoy my <laughs> voice off because the movie is much more than that. Okay, um, I wanted to start this second uh, module with this movie because, and I, I'll, I'll do that in every, um, each time I'm uh, <clears throat> starting a, a module, more or less, because of this situation I told you about the holistic approach and go beyond the um, obvious. This one. Okay, so you, you see this movie, the, there are many, many major concepts that are uh, embedded in, in what you have to do. And when you take the, the material to start working your pro progress, your project in your, on the European program, you really have to open your mind. Okay? You really have to think, uh, how, how can I do something that everybody will take advantage of? Why am I doing this? Why am I looking to the plan? Okay? Okay, piece like this, piece like that, square. Why? Why not? Uh, anything you take in, in programs, World Bank, Europaid, whatever the program, it's just guidance. They tell you uh, how to mainframe your project. But it's just um, guidelines. You have to go out of this framework and think uh, another way. And 
as you, you, you know already now at that, at that point of the, uh, the event that we're talking about education, well, there, there are many things that I put on the platform for you, so the organization we will, will provide all this for you. What about education? What is education? Is this just the way we're doing things today? Are there new ways to do it? Etc. Etc. So innovation, part of this movie, is a driver. Sharing, cooperating together is another driver. Um, being open to what you do. Okay, whatever I do, well, not it's not because of Mr. Barroso, but since the beginning, everything I've been doing, I share. I kept a little secrets for me, you know, because I had to make money. But 90% of what, what I'm doing, I share. Even if sometimes we don't receive from the, the others, it doesn't matter. You have to, you really to, to give if you want to receive. It's a bit philosophical. There is a philosopher there. So, now this module is specifically on the lifelong learning program. It's going to be a lot of information. I'm going to try to be as clear and short as possible. Because, why? Because, sorry, this is, I'm in the past. <laughs> all, uh, all the things that I'm going to tell you now are on the guidelines, the procedures, and all that stuff that is written. And obviously, I will try to give you some uh, uh, in-depth between the lines but the main, I can't go uh, far, I mean, I have to, to focus on what's really written because this is a framework, you have to buy that, okay? But I try to explain what is the meaning of, uh, of some uh, part of the, um, of the uh, information. Okay, um, <clears throat> well, first of all, uh, sorry, it's not this one. On the, on the uh, Lisbon, yeah. uh, and all these treaties have major um, fields: education, agriculture, uh, etc. So these treaties sometimes are referred in the information of the programs. It's not for you to know them. It's a good idea to have a synthesis. Yes, for example, the changes. What changes between Maastricht and and Rome, what changed in between Maastricht and, uh, um, for example, Lisbon, there is a major focus on education. There is a big changes on education as a, as a, um, as a kind of a, a major uh, driver of Europe. And more of that, you had three uh, director uh, generate in uh, Europe. There was cooperation, social, and education. Well, today, it's all together. That's very interesting, okay? We will go deeper on that later on. Uh, okay, other thing, very important. It's a bit um, technical sometimes because when Europe, uh, I say Europe to say, well, the commission or the, 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 the part, the, the director general, that is the, the main body that manages the education uh, programs in Europe, you have the documents called uh, notes, documents called uh, decision, documents called uh, work plan, uh, ex declarations. There are different kind of languages. What, what everybody uses as a common understanding, common language, remember, are actually the cities where the decision, the note, or the thing happen. It's funny, it's interesting, you discover Europe, you know how to point the, the, the cities now in Europe very easily with, with this system. So, you have major uh, processes, such as uh, Copenhagen. In Copenhagen, they decided to create some kind of a work plan, some kind, not a work plan, on vocational education and training, okay? A focus. And there was this big, big report in Copenhagen, followed by another major information in Bruges, that is in Belgium, called the Bruges Communique. Okay, as this document, the decision, the, the strategy, policy, 
Copenhagen process and Bruges communique are also major information. We will, we will see that later, and it's on the platform, okay? So remember, actually, I should put it here. You can read that, right? A little bit far. So, <clears throat> um, well, at this, at this, uh, at these meetings, uh, uh, different kind of people meet and discuss about what to do. Uh, generally, it's uh, the professional in the area, and mainly at the political level, the ministries of the education. Okay, so they they gather together. They take decision together and they try to align all the countries together to the same objectives. Maybe in, in um, I was going to say in Turkey, <laughs> not yet. Uh, maybe uh, in Italy they go to the objective their way. Maybe in France there will be another way, but it's a common objective, okay? Because obviously the systems are not uh, the same. In, uh, the idea is not to transform all this in a gray, all no cultural difference, no. The idea is to organize a common objective, okay? So these two uh, policies are very important to understand the policies and priorities. <coughs> um, yeah, one thing that I would like to mention also is this that you've been seeing in this movie, cooperation. Okay, that's a word you're going to listen uh, often in this uh, event. Oh, and something I would like to, to mention too. Well, understanding it's not very important, but you have to, to, to have an idea. Do you know that Europe is made of 27 member states at, th at that point? 17 of them share the same currency good and bad, it's a marriage. And you have also what you call the EFTA and the EEA, the Free Trade Association and the economic, uh, that is basically other countries such as Norway, Liechtenstein, I'm not risking writing it because I'm going to write wrong. Um, and uh, yeah, Switzerland. Okay. So this, this to understand that this program have a criteria called eligible countries. Some countries are not eligible, so some countries cannot participate in this specific program. All right, and it's changing more or less every two three years because of the enlargement. Before, I'm sorry, before some countries enter the European Union, they have this kind of um, 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 temporary status because all, all major uh, uh, criteria are, are uh, uh, com complied. Serbia, for example. Um, and uh, during this time, they're allowed to, to uh, in some programs, and some actions of program, they're allowed to participate. Yeah, Macedonia. The Southeast Europe are countries that are going to enter in, into, uh, you know, uh, Croatia. They say yes. Um, obviously, it's all linked with political situations. Okay. Um, about about this uh, policies and 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 and, uh, and situation, I would like also to mention. Some, some important bodies of, uh, <clears throat> so you have, um, let's say, the councils, the European Commission itself. So the, the council basically is, is, is kind of a, 
operational uh, system that change every six months. Now it's Cyprus. And, and this council um, manage the, the main actions, main programs, main everything of the European Union. So it's changed every six months. Okay, before Cyprus, I think it was Denmark. You have the Euro European Commission itself. It's always stable with this uh, two-time uh, elected um, uh, president, Mr. Barroso, which is uh, Portuguese. Uh, <clears throat> this, this councils and European Commission uh, produce documentations to, um, to make clear what is the program, what is the action. But beyond the specific action, you have, for example, a major document that was published not long time ago called New Skills for New Jobs. This is not a decision. This is nothing, uh, um, let's say, um, structural. Um, this is not a law. But it's called uh, priorities, strategic priorities. And there are flagships. For example, uh, in this, in this, uh, and the main aim of this um, publication is about tackling the, the, the problem of people not having the right competence for the jobs, new skills for new jobs. So ICTs is a flagship, access to internet is a flagship, youth on the move, youth have to get out of the town and get out of the the country, it's not the country uh, anymore, it's Europe. I'm find a job here. Well, this is a bit touchy. If I was born in Bitonto, well, I like Bitonto. I want to work in Bitonto. I want to raise a family in Bitonto. So it's a bit touchy. So somehow you have to be uh, a bit critical about what you read. It's nothing wrong with what written, but you have to be a bit critical, okay? Why should I? go out. I mean, so it's not something you're, okay, I have to do that. Oh, it's written, so I have to do that. You have to understand a bit and to cross information, okay? But these are, if you're designing a project for adults and you're not including ICTs, you're not answering a flagship of the new skill for new job. Maybe you don't get points because of that, okay? Obviously, you're not going to make a project with ICT because it's in the book. No, you're answering to a need. OK. Um, you have other important bodies that I would like to mention right now, such as um, in the European Union framework, the EKF, that is the European Qualification Framework, that is something that linked to the certification and the structure of the certification of the qualification. So everybody understands what is a welder. Everybody understands what is someone working in a restaurant. What is someone working as accountant? OK? Uh, the ETF. European Training uh, um, Forum in Turin that I had the chance to visit uh, in September. Amazing. So these guys, you want to know these guys. You want to connect with them. You want to go there and talk to them. You want to develop a networking with them. Definitely. It's an operational body of the European Union. Within the, uh, well, let's say, well, when I'm saying European Union, well, focusing on the VET, okay? Obviously, we're not specifically working on agriculture or tourism, okay? Another one, very important, the CDFOP. Thessaloniki, Greece. This is the operational body of the DG education on vocational education and training, specifically. You want to be connected with them every day. You want to register your email address to them to receive the major publications. OK? Um, well, you have, sorry? 
It's in Thessaloniki, in Greece, yeah. In one year, in six months, I connected with four major people in Cedefop. Because I, okay, I understand. We must be known by these people, and we must understand also what they are doing, what they're working, okay? This is very important. Sometimes you read the information, you talk to them, you share a forum, okay, you connect the dot. Okay, it's clear. Understand? So it's not only the information you receive to organize your, your, your remember, your project comes for a broad uh, sources of information and you have to critical think to organize yourself when you're going to go to write the section of the project. Um, well, you have a bunch of other guys, important, huh? uh, like uh, Equivet, quality assurance, it's important also. Uh, the uh, ECTS, that's uh, credits, European credits. Sometimes you do a workshop, a Grundvig workshop. At the end of this workshop, you receive 10 credits. According to the, the framework of the ETS, you put it on your CV and you, plan, you apply for a job. Oh, you have uh, 20 credits on this uh, topic. I recognize that as a, an employer. Well, if I work with this framework, okay? So, <clears throat> You, you, you're, going to, uh, you're going to see all that later on, but this is important to remember. And Google it and go to it. Okay, uh, other, um, other quite important bodies that are not uh, part of the European uh, framework. So, um, external, there is one in my opinion, very important. It's called uh, the Council of Europe. The, the, the acronym is... The Council of Europe is an organization that uh, comprehends uh, 47 uh, countries, not member states, countries in the European framework, such as Ukraine, uh, Albania, countries like that. Um, <clears throat> oh, yeah, another one that I think you should always take credit from. The International Labour Organization. These are the big guys in the world working on labour policies, uh, trends, needs, uh, anticipation, skill anticipation. I'm part of a group right now called MSAL, and we, are, we guys are working on skills anticipation. It's something um, quite important to tackle the situation of unemployment. Okay? If you know what, we, what companies will need, well, you, you'll be able to, to know what field maybe you... But this is also a bit touchy, because maybe I would like to plant uh, and grow strawberries because I like it, that's what I like to do, but nobody will employ me because the market is... So it's a bit touchy, but you have to know that. And they, ILO, uh, produce a lot of documentation, so it's important to know them. Okay, um, well, all this, all this uh, information gives you, all these uh, sources give you a lot of uh, pertinent information on this lifelong learning program. Because obviously, even if there are not in the European Commission, they write a lot of... Um, this is important, uh, maybe not this. Recommendation. Okay? Oh, I have another one here just to mention it. Robert Schuman was a politician. He was an, one of the founders of the idea of Europe with Churchill and all these guys. And uh, they, 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 they do a lot of work because, well, how, how, how Europe, uh, the, the Commission, publish and, and decide where to go? <laughs> they, they're not, uh, you know, uh, they have a crystal ball. No, they listen to people. They listen to the word of work, 
they listen to the education world, they listen to the local authorities, and they understand, and they have also a major vision that maybe in Italy you don't have, they are everywhere. Europe is represented on the UN nation, and they are everywhere, okay? So all this is important to go, to come to the uh, policies definitions and the priorities definitions. And you will see later on that priorities on this program, Grundvig uh, Multilateral, are for the uh, lifespan of the program, the lifespan of the program right now is 2007-2013, so it's ending next year. And you have the global strategy that applies every year. And then each year you have specific strategic priorities. Okay? You will see that later. So as an important conclusion, um, <clears throat> let's see what I've... Yet. I thought maybe I, I pointed out. You have um, to understand the key documents and the, the critical information to use. And uh, I just named the organization. Then I started naming the title of the document, document right? ET 2020, EU 2020, the decision uh, 7020, new skills for new job. All that are documentation. You understand the interdependency, the connection between them. Okay, uh, and it's all about when we started common language, etc. Cohesion. Okay, so you have the year twenty-seven, the enlargement, and you go to a, a year, a cohesion within Europe. So all these policies and priorities are aiming to that a common ground, common cohesion and preparing also who's going to uh, the countries that are going to enter in Europe to apply. So that's why, for example, in Portugal, Portugal entered the Europe in 86, and we guys, we just go by the book. Europe say that, we do that. Europe say no, we don't know. Well, it, so it's a bit polemic, but it's all about trying to get people mobile, this is a very important keyword, mobility. Grunvig is under a priority strategy of mobility, okay? Get people to move. Employment, okay? Social change, social intercultural understanding, and the EU sense of belonging that I referred earlier. Um, <clears throat> so these are the uh, important conclusions here. Okay, let's have a look to the um, structure. I'm going to do that a bit quicker. Oh, um, you have, um, let's say, the, the ma major sectorial and I'm going to use uh, keywords you have cominius program or let's say sub program okay you have Erasmus sub program you have the Leonardo da Vinci pro uh, program, and you have the Grundvig program. That's us. But know this. Cominius schools, secondary schools, kids. Uh, Erasmus, well, you know, if some of you have been uh, students, maybe, so you took Erasmus to go out of your country. So this is higher education, university. Leonardo da Vinci is a program addressing the vocational education staff, people, practitioners, specifically, okay? And Grundvig are addressed to adults. So, with this, this sectorial 
program, each of these programs have actions, sub sub programs. Okay? Uh, 10 here, 10 here. You can have an idea about the others. I'm not familiar with the Erasmus program and, and Comenius. Um, then, <clears throat> how can I design this to be clear? Well, you, you, after this sectorial program, you have what you call the transversal. Okay, so L, L, P, okay, so you have the sectorial level, the transversal level, each sectorial program have different specific actions. For example, one of the 10 actions of Grundvig is Grundvig multilateral project. One of the sections of Grundvig program is Grundvig workshop. Okay? And each action has its specific, well, it's have its global documentation, policy, etc. And then it has specific, the difference between the actions within the sectoral programs are on the objectives and sometimes the target group. It changes at a narrow level. Okay, the transversal, you have, it's called key activity. So you have four key activities. One, two, three, four. To be quick, the first one is about uh, supporting policies and, and how to help policymakers to address things and work on recommendations. The second one, so policy. The second one is on language. Okay, uh, language uh, proficiency is one of the key uh, skills needed in the list of the, 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 the education program. Not only your mother tongue language, but foreign language. Um, yeah. This third is ICT, Information Communication Technology. Okay? Whatever you have to deal with ICT, you would address a transversal, because ICT, as you can see, very easy, policy, transversal, address everybody. ICT, everybody, okay? Um, exploitation. Exploitation means here, taking something that another group have been doing, a project, meaning the result. For example, there is a project that designed a new way of uh, learning English called Tango. It's true. You take Tango and you apply it somewhere else. So you use all the information they've been doing. You, you get a, a good return of investment of time and money of Europe and you multiply it. Then you will design a project under exploitation. I'm working on a proof project on KEA4, which is a, a tool to assess training for soft skills, social skills, relations, intercultural. Okay, so we, we are designing a, a, a system of assessment online and we use the key A4 because it was done, the, the, the mainframe of the project, of the structure, of the philosophy strategy was done in Finland by uh, the uni University of Oulu and we are multiplying. So you have another one, I'm going to be quick with this one because this one, Jean Monnet, who was also an important person for the foundation of Europe. Jean Monnet is, is for the European body guys. 
Well, that's if Cedefop want to, to design something, work something, it's Jamone. Okay? It's mainly for uh, <coughs> people <coughs> in Europe. So at this level, you have to consider uh, to be able to apply under LLP the criteria, the eligibility, eligibility of your organization, eligibility of your country. Some country cannot, uh, Macedonia, for example, can't uh, apply in a lot of um, uh, programs. So you have the criteria. When you're looking at the structure, you, you're looking at the, 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 the criteria and eligibility to decide, okay? Well, summarizing, you have your idea. You want to do this. Now, where to apply? You have to be sure that what you want to do match the objective criteria, blah, 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 of the program, okay? If you want to create a new way of learning English, don't apply here. Apply, for example, Leonardo da Vinci development of innovation. It's something new, okay? So that's for the definition of criteria and eligibility. Is that okay, right? Uh, just a short interruption. I plan some breaks, but I don't... If you let me, I'm going to be like this until 8 o'clock tonight. So... If you want, yeah, I thought 10, 45, 11, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, what do you think? I'm, 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 I'm proposing now because, well, we have the structure. Okay. So we have uh, 15 minutes. No, Bruno. <laughs> Okay, this is very important. So, um, the beneficiaries of these kind of programs who can apply and all this stuff are provider of uh, education, practitioners, I'm a practitioner, practitioner, uh, association, NGOs, volunteering organization. Uh, be, be, be careful with the legal aspect. Huh? Always be legal. I mean, you have to be structured uh, in a way. Career guidance organization, bodies engage in policies, such as, for example, uh, Robert Sherman <coughs> um, organization, OECD. I don't know if they, they, they apply. Higher education and research center, but only in this framework, because uh, the... Um, uh, higher education and research center have also their own program, programs, according to the topics, uh, such as Erasmus, for example. Um, a third part, we already talked about the activity, so I'm going to... Uh, be a bit faster here. So, the activities that you can develop under the program might address a mobility that is a small scale, for example, uh, a Grundvig, um, yeah, study visit, for example. You take a guy, a guy goes a week or two in some uh, in country to understand how it works there. Small scale project. Partnership is a group of organizations within Europe working on a subject altogether, small scale. In, in these cases, you receive what you will learn uh, later, lump sum. For example, if you apply for a mobility, you have right, uh, you, ha you receive 8,000, 12,000, 16,000. It's a fixed amount, small scales. Our friend here, multilateral project, that's one activity, one action you, you can provide. Multilateral networks, that is basically uh, experts gathering together to support other bodies. For example, a multilateral network can support a multilateral project team. 
it's a big, uh, uh, it's a, um, a large scale um, budget also. Preparatory visits, that's why how I met Synergy, I was invited. So these two, three days, you go to a place with an agenda, with other countries, you gather in a one place, for example, we gather here, and we discussed about project ideas. And it's kind of a kick, first kickoff meeting of a potential project. Accompanying me measures that are projects that you design to support policies. For example, I'm involved, uh, I was in Turin uh, um, in September on under uh, accompanying measure project, and it's to support the work of the European Union on anticipating skills. So we've been brainstorming. And after that, you, you do what we, you, we write, what we call rec strategic recommendation for the um, uh, competence, uh, competent bodies. Okay? Oh, not bad, huh? Project examples. Okay, since we only have 10 minutes, what I propose, because then I've had to online and to go through this, it's uh, since we have a Q&A this afternoon for one hour, if you don't mind, uh, we will, uh, I will show you some examples of projects so you understand a bit uh, in a practical way what it is about, okay? Let me see maybe if, if I... Let's try it. This one... Yeah, it's Delphi. I'm sorry, I'm going to disappear here a bit to see if I can... watch you, show you. I don't know if it's clear. You don't mind if I sit a bit? Nobody answers, so you want me to keep uh, standing? Can I sit a bit? Yeah? yeah? Okay. Thank you very much. All right. Um, first thing, when you design, when any kind of project you do, uh, well, unless it's not um, a project itself, for example, preparatory, preparatory visit, for example, all action that you do in, in this framework, you must have a website. This is mandatory. Because it's one way, first of all, you're answering the, the strategy of ICT. Second, you're ad addressing and answering also the uh, dissemination aspect. You want to be known. And obviously, <laughs> believe me, Mr. Barroso wants publicity. Okay? That's a hidden agenda. It's political. It's okay. You receive money from them. So, um, I know that it's not very, um, maybe very, uh, okay. So, you have, for example, this project. And the reason why I choose this one it's because of the sustainability situation. These guys, in 2000, they met and they started uh, a Grunvig partnership.
uh, group of, um, of um, organization gathered together. Each member receive a lump sum, lump sum, And this fixed lump sum you use basically to pay your plane ticket, your hotel, to go to transnational meetings. So let's say it's a two year, two years project. You meet seven times. Obviously, seven times in each of the seven partners' country. Kickoff meeting, the first uh, meeting, blah, blah, blah. We work together. Let's design. Let's design a pilot training. Oh, let's let's design a curricula for um, uh, cooks in cruise boats. You're cooking in a cruise boat. So you, you better be a, a good manager too, because if you miss something, it's be hard to go to the shop and buy it. Better be on the boat. Okay. Two thousand. Um, Notice here, this is a beautiful logotype, don't you think? What can you learn about that, huh? At least two people were talking together. The logotype and the marketing aspect of projects, believe me, are very important. Don't obviously spend a lot of money on that because it depends. Uh, I don't have a specific experience on the budget addressed to marketing uh, dissemination, but let's say that dissemination would be five or yeah five percent of uh, the, the, the the corporate image of the project. Don't spend too much money on it, but it's crucial. Believe me, I like this project already. Just looking at the logo, oh, it's me anyway. <laughs> so, second aspect, okay, the marketing. which is part of the dissemination. I'm trying to connect now with the practical project things we've been talking about during the day, all right? What was the project about? I don't know if you can read this. Um, Provide adults with ways to improve their knowledge and skills, keeping them mentally fit and potentially more employable. Uh, it covers uh, learners, adult ed in ed education, teachers, trainers, education staff, and facilities that provide the service, relevant association, blah, blah, blah. That's why we've been talking about the uh, beneficiaries. Now, you have the Grunvig multilateral project. At some point, I don't remember where, but at some point you will have the... Well, now you have the project tab. And, and this, in this project you can see first sentence it's a project financed by the European Union within the framework of the Lifelong Learning Project Program. Mandatory. Whatever the project you do, you first state that. It's not something you're not going to lose uh, anything about that, but they define the aim. The learning of a second language with, by migrants living in the EU countries involved in the project. So this is the, uh, the aim is but global, okay? 
the outcome, the portfolio of different learning materials and a handbook. Okay, a portfolio, okay, a handbook for trainers and the two years, uh, 2010. But you can see the, the Grundvig multilateral project started in 2010. But they started together with the Grundvig Learning Partnership two, uh, 10 years uh, before that. Actually, what I understand from this project, after the Grundvig Multilateral uh, Learning Partnership, they did something else before the multilateral. Obviously, the Grundvig Learning Partnership was a very successful project. Obviously, the partners were really involved, engaged, and they did well. Obviously, they managed to achieve their goals. And obviously, their organization won with the project. You don't want to work again with someone. You don't want to work again, right? Sustainability. Okay, back to the project. Um, what else? Well, you have here also the uh, partners involved. I don't remember exactly because I didn't point it out. So I forgot to point it out. But uh, um, this is the applicant, Oslo Commune, a city I love. I, I spend a lot of time in Oslo because it's a very nice... Uh, Place, uh, you have uh, two Italian partners, these Italians. All the projects I find, there are two Italian partners all the time. Because it's possible in your country. Sometimes it's not eligible to have two partners of the same country. And you can obviously click on the links and you go to their uh, website. You have the links here. You have, in this partner tab, you have the final products available. Okay, so you, you have now the different aspect of the project. Uh, you have a list of the partners. Okay. See? That's the name of the project, Prometeo. Before this one. Um, in this tab, this is the basic tabs you will have in your project website. You have all the material that was produced during the multilateral project, meaning the reports, the minutes, any kind of document that was useful for you to understand the logic of the project. And, you know, it's not, it's, you have different ways to address uh, this kind of situation, this, this framework. But one interesting way is actually to look at the project and to see how it works. So you have an idea of, of the table. You know, if you want to play chess, at least you, you will have an idea of the chess game. You know, the horse, the tower, the, the king, the, you don't know yet how it works, but looking at the project, you will see if it's a backgammon, chess, tarot, okay, you will have an idea. So you, this is available. Anyway, if you Google Grunvig multilateral project, believe me, <laughs> you can spell, spend all night on it. Um, so you have the, the, let's say, the milestones of the project, okay, how it works, and you can understand a bit, um, you know, for example, the first meeting in Oslo, sorry, uh, etc. The partner had the first meeting in Oslo in December, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Tools and documents, well, we, we've been talking about that, all the documents will be available here. Partners' activities, maybe some kind of uh, specific information about what they do. And 
here a link on the resources. I don't know why, but that resource is just the Italian <laughs> flag. There must be some, something very important with Italy somehow. So, um, that's um, an example. I'm sorry, I've, I have to be a bit quicker in the, some parts to match the uh, 13 hours of this module. I don't know if you have specific question you would like to... And, if we don't have time, you, you remember, with the hour at uh, 3.30 this afternoon, we have an hour to discuss about specific situation that you you bit lost this morning or you would like me to go deeper or to explain better. Okay? Well, uh, let's me... Oh, it was there. Fine. <laughs> you have another one very interesting. Is it's Italian that we can see? Um, we can look at this afternoon. Okay. The the next module at uh, two thirty after lunch, we will go on the specific objectives and uh, operational objectives, etc., etc., but specifically to Grunvig multilateral project. So the same thing, but with the, the program we... You have to understand one thing. What you will learn and know and understand today with this program, Grunvig lateral, multilateral project, is basically very useful for all the programs. Just some programs are much simpler, so you don't need to go so you know, deep on the details. But for example, if you tackle um, multilateral projects such as the key activities, such as the Leonardo da Vinci uh, development of innovation, Leonardo da Vinci um, uh, transfer of innovation, you will see that you change framework, you change um, policies, you change some kind of uh, situation, but it's basically the same. On the budget, for example, exactly the same. Okay? Um, you, for example, this the strategic ob objective this year of the Grundvig multilateral um, is tackling the situ this situation that I told you today, learning pathway, aging population, the Leonardo da Vinci strategic uh, um, objective this year is about sector skills alliance. Nothing to do with aging population. And, but sector skills alliance means developing curriculum and outcomes specifically for, for specific sectors. But it's all about employment. It's all about worker. It's all about helping people to have the competencies to match the demand. So you see, uh, I'm not saying that you can use everything you learned today or this week for other programs, but it's quite complete, okay, just for you to know. And even during the process, if you guys have an interest of developing maybe some specific part, don't hesitate. To tell you the truth, the last day I decided I already have it organized, you have the timetable. You know exactly what's going to happen on Friday. But to tell you the truth, this is quite open. If you prefer to go hands-on, okay? Thank you very much. <laughs>